Hey everyone, Luke here. And if you've been following me or my channel for some time, you may have noticed that I mainly paint commissioned pet portraits. But every once in a while, I get a break from commissions and I get a chance to work on a painting that I would like to do personally. So today, I'm gonna take you through and show you how I did one of my personal pieces that you got a little tease from in the beginning of this video. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as you saw from the beginning, we're gonna be doing an eye painting. I've always wanted to do one, but mainly the thing I wanted to do was focus on a lot of texture. This is sort of the next thing that I've really wanted to work on, and so I've decided that I wanted to try pre-texturing the panel before starting painting. And so what I went ahead and did is I went and got some of this Liquid X modeling paste, which I'll leave down in the description for you to pre-texture my board in order to build up a lot more texture without having to use a ton of paint. The painting style that I do is a la prima and what that means it's wet into wet and so you can run into a lot of issues when you try to build up texture with that because you're mixing wet paint with wet paint and if you're not precise enough you can get really really muddy colors and it's not very pleasing so to pre-texture the canvas like this I just felt like it was a huge advantage to achieve that that really thick paint look that I was look, going for. Now normally in my underpaintings I tend to stick with one color but for this piece here I really wanted to exaggerate the colors. I didn't want them to be like perfect skin tones. I wanted them to be interesting and accurate, but not perfect skin tones that you'd traditionally use. Now, in some of the tests that I did beforehand, I found out that painting oil paint right on top of this uh, modeling paste with oil paint was really really difficult it felt like it was grabbing i felt the brush was grabbing a tremendous amount and it was quite a bit of a workout so when i revisited this idea i really felt the need to put this layer of acrylic paint underneath to to not only exaggerate the colors like i mentioned but to give the surface a little bit less grab as it did feel like quite a workout to paint oil paint directly on top of this medium now during this underpainting phase, I'm being conscious of the values, but I'm more thinking about what colors do I want to show through. I paint pretty thinly with oil paint, so a little bit of this is going to show through. And instead of being hyper-focused on the values, I just want to focus a little bit more on the colors that are going to sort of poke through. And so this is sort of the finished underpainting. As you can see, I'm paying attention to the values. I'm recognizing that they're there, but I'm not set in stone about that. Most of that work's gonna happen with the oil painting. And so now that that layer is all dry, I can get into the oil painting itself. Now you're gonna see here what I meant about the underpainting showing through a little bit. So the actual eye is a little bit green. There is some blue in the eye as well, but the reference photo had a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow to it. But by doing the underpainting with a little bit of blue, some of that's going to poke through and it's going to create a lot of interest in the iris itself. Now, speaking of the iris, it is going to be the main focal point of my piece. So as you see, I'm going to be using a small brush and most of the detail is going to be focused on the iris itself. As we start to work outwards, you're going to notice I'm going to use bigger and bigger brushes. The reason why I'm doing that is that I want to draw the viewer into the iris and I don't want there to be too much detailed rendered in the skin area. I wanted all the detail to be in the eye itself and everything else will sort of lead the viewer into that. So as we start to finish up some of the eyelid here, you'll start me to get into a bigger and bigger brush to be a little bit more bold and a little bit more expressive with the painting. But again, still making sure I'm keeping the realism factor there. So now that we're getting to some of these bigger areas, I, I am using a bigger brush. And what you're gonna notice is I'm not gonna be as conscious with my brushwork as I'd normally be. I'm gonna do a lot of blending and a lot of overpainting. And 
One of the reasons why is that that pre-textured layer underneath that I did initially is going to give the illusion that there is brushwork built into this. But as you can see, I'm going to spend a lot of time blending in a lot of these transitions. And the reason behind that is that I wanted to have a smooth skin tone. I do really like the blocky look that a lot of artists do, and I've done that in a bunch of my pieces. But for this one here, I wanted a very smooth transition and almost a flowy feel to the painting. I love doing commissions. I love working with clients. I like taking the material that they give me and making their vision come true. It's still really cool to me that a pastime of mine has turned into a profession. And I, I truly enjoy that. When you do something professionally and you're going from commission to commission to commission or client to client, sometimes you don't get the time to work on a piece that you'd like to do for yourself. Or when you do get the time, you're maybe a little bit too tired or you know whatever happens to you. So whenever I get a break in between my commissions, I really like to take some of these ideas in the back of my head and put them into a piece. And so I really was trying to figure out a way to get more texture out of my work. And instead of experimenting with a client's piece, I was able to take some of this downtime and to put it towards a, not only a piece that I'm really proud of, but get a skill that I can now use in some of my commission work. And so now we get into the eyelashes here. Now, typically when you're painting hair, you want to group them together. But of course, this is larger than life. So I didn't want to have these really stiff looking eyelashes and I didn't want to have to paint every single one. So what I did is I painted them as loosely as I could. And then I came back in with a dry brush after to blend it all together to give it a little bit of a more soft look but to also make it look like eyelashes without again having to paint every single eyelash itself. So as we're getting close to finishing up the painting now I'm just putting the final little touches on here and we'll be ready to get some glamour shots. So I want to thank you all for watching. If you made it this far into the video, please consider subscribing, leave a like, and maybe leave a comment down below of something that you want to try as an artist. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I really appreciate it, and I hope you all have a great day.